Hey guys, last night I built this. Um, Chris from GCM has a bunch of videos on how to build this and very well done so I'm not gonna try to top him but uh, I decided to build this, make the video quicker and let's see some pictures of the aftermath before and aftermath and so on. Um, so it looks awesome and even on these stands it just to me it's just crazy. I did put a 35 turn on it right now, but um, it will be changed to a 55 turn for the Winnebago. I just did this for the setup. A lot of screws though, a lot of screws, especially for the motor plate, but it, it looks nice, it's just sexy. Okay, now we're going to build the chassis. Well, before building the chassis, we got to build the axles. Before starting on the frame, I need to install all the hardware that goes into the axle because the leaf actually gets attached to here and the frame's going to be in the way. There'll be no way for me to attach these after. Mind you, Chris told me I was going to take this on and off the truck about 50 times by the time we're done. We'll see. So let me take this out of the bag and be right back. Now that I've made a mess of things, let's start building. Now we're going to talk about bearings. There's going to be two bearings, one on this side, one on that side, one right in the center, in the middle, and one here. So basically how that's going to work is you have um, actually one, two, three, four different type of bearing here. Very big one, two smaller one, another small one, and two small one. So there's four sizes of bearing. This one and this middle one are for the shaft. So the big one goes on the outside here. It fits right there. This medium one that's left over goes on the inside. Now that's pretty deep and it's pretty hard to put in there. So one th thing I find sometime to actually help you out is you actually put the bearing where it needs to go and then you just use that. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, the shafts, but in this case it's not. So now I'm just going to take it and I'm going to push it in there. And make sure it's seated in all the way. Now that both bearings are in there, you can install that little shaft and it actually goes in from the outside and how you lock that one in is you put the gear because it's square inside and on this side it's actually square And then you use a little screw that came with it that was in the same area of the bag and you just screw that in and everything is going to be sandwiched together. Sometimes it helps to have something to hold it. So since I don't have the dry shaft, I can put the screw in there. Just put it nice and tight. And now it moves freely. Once that is done, we can install the center one. The center one, you take the two biggest bearing that you got left and you put one on each side.
then, of course, she's being temperamental. Come on, little guy. Get in there. There we go. The bearings are done. Then you drop that in there. The output shaft is turning. Hooray! Okay, the next step would be to put in the shafts. But before putting the shaft, I noticed that one of them had a notch on it. I do not know why, but I don't think it matters. So, before inserting, well, you could insert the shaft, it doesn't matter, into it, and then put the bearing into here. But what I like doing is the same trick I did earlier, is you put the bearing onto here, and now I have to insert the bearing into the cap. So it's easier to do it when it's off like that. You know you've pushed it in there all the way. Take it off, and now the bearing's in there. So I like doing that instead of putting the shaft on it, and then putting the bearing on it, and then pushing it all in. Um, I just like doing the other way. But to each his own. So then I insert this. This is the new one that looks like a disc brake. Then I use my little tiny screws. Now I know I have to use these screws in there. I know I have to use these flathead screws in there because this is slanted also. And on these, you don't have to put any Loctite. They're nylon, so when you screw them into there, it heats up and everything really tightens up after you're finished. So don't over-tight them. Just put them snug. And it should be all ready to go. Let's do the other side. Doing it that way also, it really permits you to see if there's dust or anything in the way to um, put the, uh, <coughs> the bearings in it. And they always say to actually clean out, and I did clean out the, um, to see if there was residue or if there was anything in there from the 3D print. So everything was nice and clean. So. On with the install. Some people put marine grease all the way in um, on the shaft and all that. Uh, myself, I usually don't. I don't bother putting uh, oil um, grease or anything near the bearing. The bearing are pretty much, they're sealed bearings. Uh, so I believe that when you put grease or anything, it just attracts the, um, the dirt. So running them dry to me is a little bit better but once in a while you do have to clean them or replace them. Um, I put my white grease there. So let's pick it up. So basically what I use is just white lithium grease. It is a um, non-toxic, that's what's nice about it, but it is a uh, waterproof um, grease. So it lasts a little longer. I usually have a syringe. I usually put this in my syringe and then I use my syringe, but uh, I don't know where my syringe went. It's 
So just by putting some grease and turning it, I'm getting grease all the way around the edge. Is install the cap. Now just checking to see which crew I'm going to be using for this. Theoretically it should be these. For them. So the four screws that I have left are these. I won't bore you from seeing, watching me. I won't bore you from watching me screw all these in. So we'll fast forward to the end. And there we go. All four screws are done. Cap is done. Nice tight seal all the way around. And the rear axle is done. Other than putting these little guys in. But these I don't usually put in while I'm building it. Little pin almost ran away from me. But let's see how it's going to look. Oh, I guess they won't run away. They're actually giving you the good ones. So they're actually giving you the uh, the aluminum hex with a set screw on it. I love those because you can put them on the axle and just lock it in and everything stays there. And you can't lose it when you're on the trail changing a tire or whatever. It won't pop out. So let me back up the screw, put some Loctite. First time I used these, I did not put Loctite on them. First thing I did when I was on the trail, one of them came out. Not good. go. Everything is turning. Sometime um, when I have little tiny screws like a set screw or any screw, what I like doing with uh, Loctite is having a little background and you just put some uh, Loctite on it, like that, you can just have your set screw, back it out, dip it, and put it back in. Come on, little buddy, cooperate. There we go. Can put a little nut in there. Make sure I don't lose it. Another little nut. Hey guys, one thing before putting these hexes, I forgot to mention that. Um, there's these little silver washers. Um, they're in the kit, and that's to actually put here, because nothing stops this from pushing a little bit in, and then the pin and your hex is actually going to eat away on the, um, on the print. So you need to put that little washer in there. It's just a little tiny aluminum washer spacer. You need to put that in there. You put the pin, just like you would normally. 
and then you put your hex. And then that's going to stop the hex and the pin from eating the print, the 3D print axle. 